how do I boost my FPS? Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be delivering the sauce because the juice is temporary, but the sauce lasts forever. And today I'm not going to be showing you guys like those other YouTube videos. How, oh, do this, 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 this to boost your FPS here. No, 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 no. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to class today. We're, I'm going to show you guys how this stuff works so you guys can make the decision on your own to boost your fps here and you'll have an actual understanding of it and that way you can get better results the problem with other youtube videos like when they try to do this is they just tell you oh just enable xmp what the heck is xmp that's the problem here so i'm going to show you guys today couple of bio settings couple of secret settings here just to make sure your fps is maintained at all costs here and if you would like somebody to go through and make sure you have the highest fps possible overclock your pc for you make sure your internet is perfectly smooth make sure your stream is looking absolutely crispy definitely go to sensequality.com and we got you covered with that but let's get into these settings here of getting you the max FPS possible out of your system. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content here. And let me know what other questions you guys have that you want me to cover in future videos about your FPS here. It can be about internet. It could be about your stream. It could be even more FPS, guys. You guys let me know what kind of content you guys would prefer to see. And we'll get on that right away. All right, guys. So let's go into it. So today, we're going to be starting with the Sense Quality BIOS FPS cheat sheet here. So get your notepads ready. Get your everything that you can ready record this video or something just to make sure you have all these notes here now guys you kind of want to watch this full video to get an understanding of what kind of correlates with your fps here i feel like if you're only watching part of this video it's not gonna help you as much as if you watch the full thing so make sure you stay tuned throughout just to maintain like a good understanding of what affects your fps here so the reason why you don't buy pre-builds, which is the first thing, is because they have a locked BIOSes. Locked BIOSes, 99% of the time, you can't really do all of this stuff. So that's why we do not recommend pre-builds. And pre-builds only give you a good CPU, good GPU, and they skimp out on every other part. So make sure you stay away from pre-builds, guys, if you want the maximum FPS possible. Just build your PC. Now, the second thing is extreme memory profile. You probably heard of it. It's XMP. Now, how you check if your memory is overclocked is you can do it two ways. Number one, you could go to Task Manager and you would click on Process or Performances. Then you click on Memory and you can see the speed here. Mine's running at 5200 megahertz because I'm on DDR5. And that is overclocked there. If you're seeing 2133 megahertz, that probably means that you don't have XMP enabled and you want to go into your BIOS and turn that on there. And a second way to check, just in case this is kind of glitched out, you can go to CPU-Z, which is in the description. You could download it. You're going to click on memory here, and you're going to look at your DRAM frequency. This is really important. This will tell you for sure if your memory is overclocked. If you're seeing the DRAM frequency at 2600, like I'm seeing, it's going to be double that. So whatever your DRAM frequency is on here, times it by two, and that's what your memory is going to be. Now, mine is at 5200, which is my xmp rating so that means my memory is overclocked if yours is still on 21 33 or something like that in the 2000s generally that means that you do not have your memory overclocked activated and you definitely want to activate that for sure now a secret tip for rising users for rising users what you want to do is you want to go into your bios you want to make sure your dram frequency is and xmp is enabled and you want to make sure that's like let's say 3600 megahertz for example right and if that is your xmp right which is your dram frequency you want to make sure your fclk frequency is half of that so your fclk frequency should be 1800 megahertz and this is vital for ryzen intel users you don't have to worry about this this is absolutely vital for ryzen users just to make sure 
your memory is performing at maximum capacity here. So that would actually make a huge difference if you're on Ryzen. Now, number two, we're getting into the graphics card. A lot of people I see do don't have their graphics card configured right, which it could be because they have to reseat their graphics card or they have piggybacking or something like that. I'm going to show you how to check if your graphics cards at full capacity today so you are going to download gpuz which is in the description as well and you're going to open it here and what you want to check is you want to check bus interface this is important guys with your bus interface you want to make sure that this is at time 16 either 3.0 or time 16 4.0 that is going to make sure you're getting the max performance possible out of your graphics card. If you see times eight or times 1.1 while you're playing a game, that's how you check. If you're seeing 1.1 or times eight or something while you're playing a game, there's a problem and you got to reset your GPU or fix that because that's going to hurt your FPS. So this is how you make sure your graphics card is running perfectly stable here. Now, the third thing that we're going to get to is probably one of the most important things here is guys the cpu behavior everybody thinks that gaming on pc is only about your graphics card guys it is not only about your graphics card literally games are so smart nowadays they know how to use every single part of your system without you even knowing they use your memory they use your cpu they use your gpu they use your storage they use everything so you want to make sure that all of your parts are a hundred percent at full performance or you will not get that fps that you're expecting a lot of people skimp out on the other parts and just get go with a big gpu then they're like why am i getting only 100 frames that is why you need to make sure you have a balance build all right guys so i'm back with my glasses here because it's about to get serious here so this is not only for intel users like ryzen users can watch this too and actually learn something here so before i get into intel think of your cpu as a car and your car right is going to drive trying to drive as fast as possible right and your gigahertz on your cpu which you could check from task manager performance right here your gigahertz is your horsepower you want your horsepower to be maxed out you want the most horsepower possible right your voltage your cpu voltage is going to be your gas so that's how your cpu gets gas to load up and ramp that horsepower up and you want to make sure that your horsepower is always as high as possible to be able to maintain that fast speed of gaming or just as going as fast as possible. So that's why we're disabling some of these settings here just to make sure those are good. So just if you think of your PC as a car, your CPU is your horsepower, your voltage is kind of like your gas, then you'll be able to stand understand this perfectly fine here now for the cpu behavior cpu behavior usually has to do with let's say intel or amd or your motherboard or windows itself trying to implement some kind of power management feature so you can save on power so let's say i just walk out of my um like pc right here i'm just gone i'm driving to the store or something my c is gonna go to sleep my pc is gonna go to sleep or do something or activate a c state to make sure i'm not consuming as much power now this is great for like your electricity bill build and stuff like that but guys we're, we're not here to save on energy <laughs> we're here to get the max frames possible so we need to disable a lot of these features just to make sure we're not saving on performance we're trying to get the max performance possible now for ryzen cpus uh and intel i'm gonna put a link in the description um for like the timestamp of intel so you could just skip to that but for the ryzen cpus we're gonna start with the ryzen cpus what you want to do is you want to first you want to disable c state now what is c state nobody ever explains this they always they always tell you guys on fps guides and stuff like that disable c state do this do that they never explain it because i don't think they understand it c state basically means like let's say you're not doing anything on your computer like i'm only running notepad right here so what happens is my system automatically goes into not sleep but it automatically goes into a low power mode 
and it makes sure that my CPU isn't using as much energy and it's turning off part of my CPU there to make sure that I'm conserving energy here. Do I want that? No, because I want the max FPS possible and that can mess with your games here. So you wanna go into your BIOS and you wanna disable C state and that'll get you covered right there just to make sure you're getting high performance. Now, CPPC. What CPPC basically is, is it lets Windows decide which cores on your Ryzen CPU is being used for your games and everything else. My thing, guys, personally, my philosophy is I want to be, I want my processor to be able to decide which cores is used instead of Windows. Windows is not always the greatest way to make sure you have the highest frames possible. Windows likes to do a little funky stuff when it comes to your FPS here. So you wanna make sure your processor is picking those cores that you game on so that you're getting the max FPS possible and it's actually faster for the processor to pick than Windows or the OS system that you're using itself to pick. And a lot of people don't understand that. So basically, when you disable CPPC in games like Warzone, uh, in games that are CPU intensive, it can usually benefit you overall in the end. So I would recommend disabling CPPC if you are on a Ryzen and see how it works. And if that doesn't work, just leave it on auto and that's perfectly fine, guys. So now we're getting into Intel here. So Intel, Intel, speed shift is basically when your cpu uh the speed shift moves like the cpu state control from the os to the cpu it's basically it's basically cppc of ryzen but the intel version of like cppc so you want to make sure you disable this just because you don't want you know how in a tesla like you have the auto drive and it goes autopilot saving you and conserving you energy and stuff like that you don't want autopilot here you want to be able to get the fastest possible you want to shift it into speed or sports mode you want to shift your card into sports mode here so make sure you disable this and you should be fine on intel and now speed step this is supposed to extend the life of your cpu no if you disable this it's not going to be a huge deal like cpus last I think like 12 years guys so unless like you want your cpu to last 12 years then this shouldn't be a problem it'll drop the i think the life expectancy of your cpu by two years so if you plan on keeping your pc for 10 years which most people don't then you should be all in the clear to disable this now the only bioses or motherboards that i don't recommend disabling this on is asus and gigabit and that's because they lock it into your default gigahertz speed which is this 3.2 right here if you see it right here so if you're on asus and gigabit i will not recommend you disable speed step you can disable speed shift and it should be perfectly fine there but yeah guys so like if you just think of your cpu and everybody tries to make this as hard as possible they don't want to tell you because it's just so hard it's not hard guys it's think of your cpu as a car your horsepower is your gigahertz you want that as fast as possible your voltage is just basically your um your uh gas and you want to turn off all those energy saving eco boost features you want to put it in sports mode baby so you want to make sure everything is good to go so you can get the max fps there and guys i really really hope that help you guys and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe again that would truly truly mean the world to me guys and again if you need any help with this or you want a professional to actually go through your pc for you and make sure it's perfectly fine don't forget to visit sensequality.com and we got you covered guys but you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and let me know how you guys like the video and how we could improve here that would help a lot guys but check out my other videos for fps guides as well and i hope you enjoyed this one guys i'll see you later sips t